Welcome to The Prophetic Edge. My name is Larry Sparks. I'll be your host. And when you know what God is saying to you prophetically and you respond, I believe that gives you the edge of victory in your everyday life. Well, I've got a good friend of mine here as a guest. She's an author of The Seer's Path and his powerful new book, Seeing Behind the Veil, Anna Werner. Anna, I want to dive right on in here because... I think when I when I read this book, you know, as a publisher, mm -hmm. I remember getting and thinking it reminds me of Maria Woodworth Eder's book, Signs and Wonders, which is a diary oh. of all the miracles she's experienced. And this is obviously different because this is not just miracle stories. These are prophetic, mm -hmm. supernatural encounters Holy Spirit gave you. But each one of these, I believe, is an invitation for the reader to get the same kind of revelation, perhaps even open up the same measure of encounter. I mean, God obviously meets us all differently. He's very personal and individual, but there's something about reading these experiences that you share that provokes something inside of us saying, God, if Anna could have this kind of relationship with God, it is available to me as well. What was your heart in, in presenting this and writing this? Well, Larry, if I was being honest, it came out of an encounter. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, was, I had a visitation or an encounter with the Lord where I saw... Um, myself and I saw this veil in front of me and I heard voices behind the veil and it was like mm. I was hearing I mean this sounds bizarre I know that sometimes seer it sounds bizarro but it was totally God but I hey, could hear yeah. the voice of God and Jesus and Holy Spirit talking behind this veil they were separate yeah. and they were talking and then I was looking in the veil trying to get close to it and Jesus literally peeled it back and he looked at me and he said Anna, what are you doing? And he said, don't you know your place is to help people come in? Wow, wow. And he said, you have access. Bring people here. Yes. And that was why I was like, wow. And then after that encounter, God said, Anna, I want you to take like all these encounters you've had as a seer. Mm. And I want you to take the meat of them and put them in a book. Like if you were writing your legacy for your children, mm. like write what the things that I would want to pass on to them yes. that he showed me put it in a book. And at first I was scared. I'm God, you know, these are my personal, yeah, yeah, this yeah. is very personal. Yes. You know, I talk about, you know, when my husband and me lost our baby in that book, yeah. I share about vulnerable things of, you know, being tired and weary as a mom at times and how God restored me and times where I was sick yeah. and I had to press in for my healing. Yeah. You know, I took from a lot of variety of things. But, but that's every day. That's, Anna, that's real life, though. That's, that's what yeah. I think is so powerful about this. You're connecting with people. People can relate because that's where they are. And I want, and I'm not saying like, Heaven encounters are great. Yeah, like they're yeah. all so inspiring and they want, you know, they just their testimony brings something to us. But for me, I don't want to be just like another heaven story. Like I want people as they read this mm. and they read the encounters to go into encounter themselves. Yeah, yeah. As I talk and I describe the eyes of the father, mm. I want people to go right into an encounter and be looking at the eyes of the father. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. because that's my heart is I want to always bring people into intimacy with God. Yes, yeah. Well, I want to encourage you, for those of you who would read a book like Seeing Behind the Veil, or again, I think of these books that share testimonies of people's encounters with the Lord, what they're intended to do is actually so stir your spirit. that You know, Anna and the people who have these encounters, they're, they're not people that mm -hmm. are these superheroes. You're not people who mm -hmm. are celebrities. You're, not, you're everyday people. And again, that's not demeaning you. That's just saying, I mean, I, I love you sharing the personal mm -hmm. stuff because these are everyday people. You're, an every, you're a mom, you're a wife, you got mm -hmm. two kids, go through a lot of everyday stuff. But the reality is how God has encountered you and how you've experienced him, mm -hmm. that is not just exclusive to you. Like I believe God has really given you an anointing to help take people by the hand and bring them behind the veil, just like you talk about in this book. Yeah, it's not just for the elite. I think sometimes yeah. we can look at people, maybe they're in ministry and we see them talk about these things and think, wow, like they're so anointed. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I've yes. been there. I've gone to conferences and thought, wow, they're just so anointed. And it almost... And I'm not devaluing those people. Of course, they're yeah, anointed. Yeah, They've yeah. paid a mm. sacrifice for that anointing. Let's yeah, be real. Yes, yes, yes. But we have access to the throne room. Yeah. As a believer, we all have access. And we all can see in the supernatural. Yeah. But often, our thinking that, hey, it's not for me. Yeah. It's just for that person. That sometimes is actually the biggest blockage 
I've yes. seen, yes. as I've walked person after person, and I'm speaking out of experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I lead people into heaven encounters all the time. I yeah. teach them tools on how to access heaven, these kinds of things. And you see but, things that block it and unlock it. Right. It's powerful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's things that really block it, and often our own self doubt and fear, yeah, and, yeah. you know, is this really God or is, am, is this just me? Or, you know, I don't want to go there because. I don't want to do something that's not of God. Yes, yeah. You know, well, actually, that can be fear. Yeah. Standing in the way of us mm. having this amazing encounter. I just feel the presence of God right now. I do too. On do, you, this. do you have something that you wanted to release? I, yeah, or? I do. I just want to <laughs> speak to you at home. Like, if you have struggled, like, you can relate to this yeah. where you actually feel afraid mm. to this whole thing about seeing. You're going, I don't know if this is for me because I don't want to do something that's not of Jesus and not biblical. I just want to speak this word to you and release this over you. God is so good. Mm -hmm. He will confirm himself. Your fear, like I actually speak against spirit of fear right now in Jesus name and actually religion as well that has been holding you back and blocking you from really accessing the throne room and accessing the throne of God. Yes. I just speak in Jesus name. You have access. God, I pray that you would absolutely remove the scales right now that has been blocking people's spiritual eyes from being able to just enter in. And I pray right now, just the impartation that you'll enter in with ease like you haven't before. Yeah, I sense the Lord is telling you right now, for those of you who might be intimidated or even be dealing with fears like, but I don't want to do something that's not right. I don't want to do something that's beyond uh, the biblical confines. I don't want to do something that that is, you know, mystical, strange, bizarre. That's understandable. But you know what? I feel like here is a safeguard for you. Just remain in partnership with Holy Spirit. I was just thinking of the scripture where Jesus says, listen, I'm a good father. A good father does not give his children a snake or a scorpion. When you ask for the Holy Spirit, God is not going to give you something evil. He is not going to give you an evil mm-hmm. spirit. So for those of you, even right now, I do feel like it's honest shared. He's opening up that realm. I even sense right now you're having encounters as you're watching and as you're listening. And the Lord is saying this to you as you ask me. Don't be presumptive. Don't just assume. But there is something about asking God, asking the Father, Ask him to open up your eyes to see into that realm and recognize you are seeing in partnership. You're not just seeing by yourself. You're not asking, and you're not accessing some mystical power. You're seeing in partnership. You're seeing in relationship. And you're seeing vitally connected to a person called Holy Spirit, who is God, who is also a good father, who is mm-hmm. not going to give you something bad as you are asking for something good, which is to know what he is doing and to see how he is moving. So as we get into the next segment, We're going to unpack more of these truths. And I believe that this gift of being able to see, discern in the spirit is going to open up even more. Don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Prophetic Edge. This is your host, Larry Sparks, and thank you so much for joining us. This is a brand new show that we're doing in partnership with the amazing folks at God TV because our heart is for you to be connected with the prophetic voice of God. That's why we have authors and guests and speakers like Anna Werner on here who hear what God is saying prophetically, and that's great, but we also want you to receive that type of supernatural prophetic ministry through the program. You'll get teaching, but we're also going to bring you into places where you receive prophetic ministry as we just yield this time to the Lord, yield this time to the Holy Spirit, and let Him say what He wants to say and do what He wants to do. And diving right on in, though, one thing I sense that the Lord wanted me to say to you just as we start this journey together, 1 John Chapter 2, verse 20, it says this, For the Holy One has given you an anointing. I just felt like the Lord was saying to you, for those of you who are watching, you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. That means you have the Holy Spirit living inside of you. And I know when I was growing up in the Lord, I would go to different conferences and meetings, and I would see people operating in signs, wonders, prophetic power, all that type of thing. And I'd say, wow, they are so anointed. And the Lord corrected me, and He said, you're anointed. And I want to say that to you, you're anointed. Do you know why people are able to operate in theory? The reason that we should be able to operate in power, signs and wonders is not that we're more anointed than another person. We just yield our lives to God and God can fill us and do what he wants to do, release what he wants to release through us. So I want to let you know on the basis of 1 John 2.20, 
you are anointed. There is an anointing from the Holy One. You have received it. And the wonderful thing is, Anna, anybody can operate in this. This is not an elitist yeah. thing. This is not for the superstar. This is something that we have all received as children of God. So diving on in, because we're talking about seeing in the spirit. Mm -hmm. This is a prophetic dimension that I'm convinced God's opening up more and more, making it less spooky, more normal, because God wants things translated from heaven, things that we see, hear, receive from heaven. He wants it released into the earth. So right. what is a seer? Because I always love the story when you and your husband first met, you kind of introduced, you know, it's like what you yeah. were explaining to him, what is a seer? So Kind of share that story yeah. and I think, let us know. I think often that is the challenge for seers is just developing language yeah, yeah. for what it is we do and what it is we're seeing. Yes. And so a seer is a prophet, but primarily getting revelation from God through the gift of sight. Mm. And you can see it's biblical. You can go into the Bible. You can see there's seers throughout the Bible. This isn't just a made yeah, upward yeah. and yeah when you know when I was first married like in my first time even dating my husband yeah, yeah. um I remember that the hardest thing most people have other hard things to talk about yeah. in their marriage <laughs> but for me the hardest thing was actually to yeah. tell him I'm a seer because I had actually gone years of not really sharing yeah, yeah. all these encounters I had had and and things that I was seeing in the spirit even in Brazil and different countries I lived in you know, angelic, demonic, yeah, yeah. heaven encounters, all these things. And I lived almost in secret. And actually, I think there's lots of you watching this, yeah. Sears, that you can relate to this. Because it's so, you can be often thought of as mystical. And it's hard to sometimes find the language yeah. to unpack it. What is it I'm seeing? And how does this practically apply to the person I'm talking to in front of me? Yes. Um, and that was my situation with my husband. And I just, I remember that day where I said, you know, I'm a seer. And he said, you're a what? <laughs> I, I like, I still remember. And I said, I, yeah. I just want, you know, like I see, like a seer, like I see like angels and kind of like have these heaven things. Like I didn't have the language at the time. Yeah, yeah. And I said, there's an angel that like hangs out with us uh, every time we go out on a date. Yeah. And he's in our back seat right now. And my yeah. husband was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> like right now, like what's he doing? You know, my husband's driving like really tense, you yeah. know. <laughs> he's just, what's he saying? I said, he's just like, he always just hung out with us. And yeah. it was, it was really, for me, it was confirmation that God's in our relationship. Yeah, and good. so it was good. It, like, I think it was more for me than for him, honestly, because yeah. I could see the angel but you know I really struggled with just sharing and and through honestly through my marriage yeah um I really learned how to just develop how to explain yeah. seer what seer anointing is in a non-mystical way because it shouldn't be so mystical yeah yeah because we all have access yes we you you and I and you Larry you can access heaven yes. and see things from heaven and pull them down. When I say pull them down, what does that mean? Yeah, yeah. Okay, it means I'm seeing in heaven this room, yeah. and God's showing me this revelation. Yeah. And now take what you see. Yes. And then, you know, of course, dive into scripture. Yes. Find where it biblically backs that up, because yeah. you, you always want to back it up with the word. But then, what do you do with it? Yes. You can't, see, a lot of times seers just get so stuck in all these encounters, right? And we yeah. just like write all down, and we, but now we're in a different season, folks. Yes. I just hear the Lord saying yeah. this, not just for seers, but prophets. We're in a different season, right? Yeah. Where we can't just receive and soak. Yeah. Of course, you take every word yeah. and you wait on the Lord before you unpack it. But we're in a time where we need to impart yes. what we've soaked and received yep. and just impart it to people. Well, it's interesting as you're sharing that, I just want to encourage the folks who are watching. The good news is this, because again, I believe Anna has real grace to make this kind of thing very clear and practical. And that's probably because of the relationship with your husband there, mm. because he is very, I, I know, you know, I know your husband and he thinks like, okay, he's like a strategist. It's like, okay, what's the next thing? How does this all make sense? How does it all fit together? But I really sense the Lord is saying to those of you who are like, I really want to operate in that. I desire to see, I desire to prophesy, I desire to hear what God is saying. The Lord is saying this, there's two safeguards. I know there's more, but two key things that'll keep you safe is number one, loving the scriptures, loving the word of God even more than you love to see and to prophesy. Because mm -hmm. the reality is this, God wants you to earnestly desire the gift of prophecy and whatever expression that he gives it, seeing is an expression of the gift of prophecy. And the Bible says legally, it is okay for you to legally desire, earnestly desire 
the prophetic gifts, okay? So that's one thing. But the other safeguard is this, along with the Word of God and loving the Word of God, is on a, I think it's living in a constant conversation with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Because again, I think of that scripture where Jesus says, listen, if you ask me, if you ask me for the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to give you something bad. If you're asking me for that unlocking or manifestation, activation of gifts of the Spirit in your life, I'm not going to give you a serpent. I'm not going to give you a snake. I'm not going to give you an evil spirit. But I think there's something to that constant conversation with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And, and also just the obedience. Yeah. Like just where if God says something, you obey Him. You do it. And you trust Him. Yes. A hundred percent. You yeah. know my story, like yeah, in yeah. Brazil where God like saved my life. We don't even have time to unpack that story, y'all. But, yeah, yeah. you know, where God saved my life. And, and But basically I followed angels through the slum. And it was like, you know, I literally just depended on God. And we're in a season where we don't have time to not just mm. obey God with our 100%. Yeah. And I tell people this about seeing, being childlike is such a key, actually. Yes. We think of childlike meaning, okay, that's so immature. No, but actually not. the ability to believe and trust God in that place of like, because if we're really work, walking in a love relationship where we know God, if we really know the love of God, we know that our daddy papa's got us yeah. and he's not out to hurt us. Yeah. Somebody needs to hear that. Yes. And so then we can walk in absolute trust and obedience. So if yeah. he says, jump, Anna, jump, Larry, yeah. you yeah. jump. Yes. If he says, like today, he yeah. said, Anna, I was in a green room, and he said, you need to go out there yeah. and hear this something. And so I just literally stopped what I was doing. I said, Jesus says this, I go here. Yeah. If he says go, I go. If he says do, yeah. I do. Yeah. But see, that's the part about being a seer. Yeah, yeah. Well, I want to encourage you as we get ready for our third segment I believe Anna really has an anointing and a grace to help all of us access an encounter in the heavenly realm. So don't think it's a mystical thing because here's the deal. When we go to that place, do you know why God takes us to heaven? God takes us and gives us access to heaven. He wants to show us things so that ultimately we can say, God, what do you want me to do with these things that you're showing me in the spirit? So how can I partner with that in my everyday life on earth? Because God wants to see things happen. God wants to bring his kingdom into the earth, and he wants to use you and I to translate that which is heaven and release it into the earth. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Prophetic Edge. Larry Sparks, your host here, along with Anna Werner. We've been talking about seeing in the Spirit, the prophetic. And it's interesting, during our break, we were just having a little Bible study here on Daniel 7. I want to read something, because I believe this is so relevant to many people right now who desire, I want to operate in the prophetic. I want to see into the Spirit. I want clarity, because I do believe God wants to open those realms up. In fact, Anna's going to pray, and I'm confident God is going to open up that seer realm to many people. But I actually believe in Daniel chapter 7, we see a protocol of what we're supposed to do, mm -hmm. how we're supposed to act or function when God opens up that realm. So I just want to read this one scripture because, I mean, time after time, and you can elaborate on this, Daniel is consulting the Lord. He's talking to the Lord about what he's seeing. And even for those of you who get dreams and visions, and as the Lord begins to pull back the veil and show you these things, and most of them, I'll be honest, are going to be unusual. Here's the deal. We don't speak these things, write these things, video these things, or share them prematurely. Do you know what Daniel did? Verse 15 of Daniel chapter 7 says, I, Daniel, was troubled by all I had seen, and my visions terrified me. Now, I'm not saying that your visions are going to terrify you. I'm just saying that in this context, Daniel, things were being opened to him concerning eschatology, end times, the last days, supernatural, I mean, the realm of heaven, big stuff, okay? But for whatever God shows you, I think this is a posture that you need to approach him with. So Daniel is troubled by all he sees. Verse 16, so I approached one of those standing beside the throne. And I love this. I asked him what it all meant. And he explained it to me like this. And I believe this clear language starts to come to Daniel. Anna, what would you say? Just continue to go in that flow. Yeah, I, you know, we often as seers don't have the revelation yeah. right away. And because of that, I think we can get, that's where worry steps in or doubt. You know, I don't understand this. I don't have a grid for this. I don't, I don't see this. Where is this yes. written in, in the word? Yeah. You know, I'm in this throne, you know, I'm in this room in heaven and I see, you know, I've had crazy encounters yeah, yeah. in heaven. It's all throughout my books, but you know, I'm seeing this big book in heaven and where is that? Okay. No revelation. Well, you body know, parts you know, in heaven. I mean, I to body, be honest, yeah. Body part room in heaven. Well, where is that God? And yeah, you yeah. know, and you start 
wondering. But see, the key is, in all of this, we lean into Jesus. Yes, yes. Really. Because there's always going to be the questions that rise up. I feel like sometimes the enemy, we think about spiritual warfare so big and like it's all these people putting, you know, on us. But really sometimes it can be in our own mind and our self-doubt. Yeah, that's true. And for seers, I think we really struggle with this. But Daniel, you can see this in Daniel 7. Oh, it yeah. says, I kept asking and I kept looking. Yes. And as he looks more, more is actually open to him. That's good. So I always encourage people, you know, when you have an encounter with God, I always ask God, can I come back? Yeah. And yeah. will you show me more? Mm. You know what? He's never denied me. Wow. He's always taken me back to that room in heaven and showed me a little bit more every time. But see, I have that childlike, I just, I know he will never deny that yeah. for me. Yeah. But I just keep asking. Sears, we have to be curious. Yes. Why are you showing us God? Yes. And then we lean into him yeah. with everything and say, now give, show me the revelation. And he always does. Yeah, yeah. He always does. He always does. He's faithful. He's faithful. And then it removes, also, it removes the pressure on us. And we put it on God. Yeah, yeah. And we say, okay, I don't have to have this all together. I'm learning. Yeah. We're all learning. Yes. You don't have it all together. Yeah. I don't, I will never I say, that. oh, yeah. I have the word of God, you know, unless no. God says, Anna, Reveal this, but I always ask God for permission, you know. Yes. But it's like, I'm always careful to say, I said, God, you know, in humility, it's all about you, God. Yes. It's all about your glory. Like, what are you showing? What are you saying? I'm always asking him. And that posture of heart keeps us in a safe place when it's all about him. Because yeah. at the end of the day, Anna, it's not about you or I right. sharing a prophetic word. It's not about you or I looking and appearing spiritual and supernatural. Right. And I've had all these visions. Like yeah. none of that matters. I think intimacy with Jesus yep. is the safest place for a prophet seer or prophetic person to live in right. is because it's all about him. I, we've got about two minutes left. Can you just pray, minister as the Holy Spirit directs to help open up this realm to people? Yeah. So um, <laughs> it's funny because I actually see stuff right now yep. in this studio. So cameras are on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, if you're at home, maybe you can, I pray your spiritual eyes would be open. You can see the angel standing behind Larry right now. If you're in this studio, see if you can see the angel that's standing behind. I'm talking to you as I'm seeing an angel. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's like, the Lord. But Father, I just Whoa. pray right now for your presence just to mm -hmm. fall yeah. on us. Everybody that's watching this, yeah. Jesus, I take up authority over a spirit of fear, yes. condemnation, and confusion in Jesus' name, and I rebuke it. I break that power, and I thank you, Jesus, by the blood of your Lamb, God, that we yeah. are pure. We are set pure. And yes. God, that we, I thank you, Jesus, that I, Larry, and those watching, everybody, we don't have to have it all together, God. We thank you that there is freedom in love. There is freedom. Like when we know, when you know your love, you're free. Yeah. I just speak that word over you at home. You're absolutely free. God, I just pray that you would impart right now the seer anointing. Yeah. Let your spiritual eyes, may your spiritual yes. eyes be open in this moment. Now do me a favor. You at home watching, get really still. Not just in your body in your mind, be still. You know what I mean when you're absolutely still. Wait and feel the peace of the Lord now rest on you. And then ask Jesus, Jesus, I pray right now that you'll show everybody here and everybody watching a picture that's just from your heart, God. Not for what you do in ministry, not for a prophetic word to release, but just for you. Because God is always after intimacy first. Yeah. What does God want to speak to you right now? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Mm. See, I, I just saw things fall from heaven right now. Like yes. I saw on a shelf things falling from heaven. Yeah. So I know that some of you are getting downloads right now from heaven in this moment. Yeah. I want to encourage you for those pictures, the things that the Lord has shown you. Write them down, record them, mm -hmm. and just like Daniel, keep talking to God about them and he is gonna give you more and more insight and clarity. Thank you so much for joining us on this first episode of The Prophetic Edge. We look forward to seeing you again next time. Thank you for watching Prophetic Edge with today's guest, Anna Werner. 
We'd love to hear from you. Please send us your questions or comments by going online to god.tv forward slash edge. You can also re-watch today's episode or any other program in this series at god.tv forward slash edge. Be a part of bringing content like this to the outer ends of the world. Go to god.tv to become a God TV media missionary today.